The European Union is working on what would be its 11th round of sanctions since Russia invaded Ukraine last year. And this time it is focused on cracking down on those breaking trade restrictions which are already in place. And in order to achieve this, the European Union has proposed a new tool to limit trade with the third countries, who seem to be involved in bypassing these sanctions. The document is an updated proposal by the bloc's Executive European Commission for the 27 member states. And it comes after Germany expressed concerns during the first discussion last week over any possible future restrictions in trade with China. Speaking at a Council of Europe summit, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz demanded that Russia eventually be made to pay for the damages caused in its invasion of Ukraine. The leaders at the two-day summit are expected to approve a new register of damages, a mechanism to document evidence and the claims of damage, loss or injury incurred related to the Russian-Ukraine conflict. The, Euro the European Court of Human Rights is the court of the Council of Europe Scholz also called on the Council of 46 members founded after the World War II that they themselves must fulfill all their obligations without any kind of compromise. Britain and the EU have agreed to strengthen cooperation on migration with a new working arrangement between the British agencies and the European border and also the Coast Guard Agency. Speaking in an interview before the Council of European Summit in Iceland, the British Prime Minister said that the illegal migration through the English Channel was one of his government's top priorities. After his meeting with the European Commission, President Ursula von der Leyen, the British Prime Minister's office issued a statement saying that Britain and the EU would now discuss the details and operational operations of this new working arrangement. U.S. President Joe Biden and the Republican leaders offered hope of a deal that could avoid an unprecedented debt default given the huge ramifications. However, big challenges remain. In a sign of nervousness over what could be the first ever U.S. debt default, over 140 CEOs sent a letter to Biden and the congressional leaders stressing the need for an agreement. The letter signed by the chief executives from Pfizer and Morgan Stanley, among others, stated that the U.S. must avert the potentially devastating scenario. Syria is all set to attend its first Arab League meeting in over a decade after being exiled by the Arab League in 2011. The reintroduction of Syria into the Arab League began with the Syrian officials taking part in a preparatory session ahead of Friday summit in Saudi Arabia. This comes after the pan-Arab body officially welcomed back Syria's government earlier this month, securing President Bashar al-Assad's return to the Arab court. Riyadh also confirmed last week that work would resume between both Riyadh and Damascus, respective diplomatic missions as well. In an attempt to strengthen ties with the Cuban community abroad, Cuba has announced new measures that ease restrictions on its citizens living abroad. Now, these new measures will make passports valid for 10 years instead of 6 and, and will also cut costs related to renewing the documents. The new rules are set to take effect from July 1st. Now, many Cubans living abroad complain of bureaucratic hurdles and exorbitant fees for maintaining ties and also renewing travel documents with their home country and these new rules are expected to appease them. Ecuador's National Assembly has begun an impeachment hearing against President Guillermo Lasso. The opposition politicians say that the president disregarded warnings of embezzlement related to a contract with the state-owned oil transportation company. He, however, denies these accusations, saying that his administration made changes to the contract signed years before he took, the, he took office. Now, if Lasso is removed For from the office, the he will be replaced by the vice president, president Alfredo Borrero. If Lasso instead opts to dissolve the assembly, he will govern with laws issued by decree until new elections are called.
There's a whole new dimension to the high-stakes Turkey elections that has now moved into the runoff. That is after neither Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan nor the opposition candidate Kilic Darulu could secure the 50% threshold. All eyes are now on the third candidate, Sinan Ohan, who has secured just 5% of the votes. But the question that arises here is, which side will his supporters back? Ohan holds a considerable say in who will get to rule Turkey. His support or support of his supporters is crucial for both Erdogan and Kilic Darulu. He could still manage to dethrone Erdogan after 20 long years. Okay, the election is the second place. A simmering face-off between Kabul and its embassy in India has escalated. The diplomats at the embassy in New Delhi have underscored a rejection to the Taliban regime taking full control. Afghanistan's ambassador to India, Farid Mamunze, who was appointed by the Ashraf Ghani government, slammed the regime's bid to take over the, the embassy, saying that the embassy is still run by the diplomats appointed by the former Republic of Afghanistan. Now, this comes after Kabul issued a letter for a change of guard at the embassy in India last month. North Korean state media reports that a North Korean leader Kim Jong-un inspecting North Korea's spy satellite development project. North Korean Central News Agency released images showing Kim Jong-un with his daughter inspecting the project. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky hailed the U.S. Patriot missile system and said that due to the unreal air defense system, Ukraine was able to shoot down six Russian Kinsel missiles in a single night. A Patriot missile was also reportedly shot down. The Russian Kinsel missiles are touted as the next generation hypersonic missile that are all but unstoppable. Whereas the U.S. Patriot system is one of an array of sophisticated air defense units supplied by the West to Ukraine. Zelensky also thanked the West's contribution in strengthening Ukraine's defense systems. Nine people have been killed in an explosion at an illegal firecracker factory unit in India's eastern state of West Bengal. The explosion rocked uh, the Agra town as the building housing the firecracker factory collapsed. Reason for the explosion is still unknown to the police. A search operation is also underway to look for more victims. The victims with burns were taken to the hospital for treatment. Two people died in a blast in the town of Oreo in northern Spain. The blast occurred on a sidewalk bench not far from a children's playground. Local authorities suspect that this could be a gender-based violence attack. The incident is now under investigation as per the local media reports and the gender-based angle will also be taken into consideration. The Kenyan authorities have exhumed 10 more bodies in the Shaka Hola forest, where the remains of more than 200 victims of a doomsday cult have already been found. The latest discovery comes after a two-day break as three men in critical conditions were rescued and taken to Malandi sub-county hospital. The police officials have also arrested four people believed to be linked to the doomsday cult. Meanwhile, hundreds of people are still reportedly missing and the death toll is expected to rise as the search continues. Firefighters rescued several people and a dog from an apartment fire in downtown Portland. The multiple explosions took place in the fire as the fire ripped through the structure. Transportation officials also had to close off an interstate highway and the surface streets in the immediate area because of low visibility from the heavy smoke. However, no casualties have been reported so far. The US has returned 36 pre-Hispanic and colonial artifacts to Peru. Now, the pieces include textiles from the Chavin Parkas, Nascawari, 
and also Shuha sculptures, some of which are more than 2,000 years old. The two religious paintings from the 17th and the 18th centuries and stolen, but they were stolen from temples in Cusco and Shanske, they were also returned. Meanwhile, the U.S. Justice Department has charged a former Apple engineer with attempting to steal the firm's technology related to autonomous systems, including self-driving cars. The engineer, named Weibo Wang, back in 2017, accepted a U.S.-based job with a Chinese company working to develop self-driving cars before resigning from Apple. Google's parent company Alphabet said that it would delete accounts that had remained unused for two years starting from December. The move is to prevent the security threats including hacks. The company said that if a Google account had not been used or signed into for at least two years, it might delete the account and also the content across Google workspaces. Google will send multiple notifications to the account, email address and also recovery mail of the inactive accounts before deletion. A small lake less than an hour's uh, drive from Canada's largest city, Toronto, is one of a handful of sites around the world that could embody humanity's entry into a new geological period. And this is because of its unique composition. Crawford Lake holds layers of sediment in its depths that have remained unaltered for thousands of years. And these layers mirror the various suspended substances in the region and beyond, including human pollution, helping scientists track how humans have impacted the environment. Fires in the Canadian province of Alberta have scorched another 95,000 hectares of land in two days. This brings the total number of devastation up to 616,000 hectares. Currently, there are 86 wildfires in Alberta and 24 of those wildfires are considered out of control. According to the Executive Director for Alberta Emergency Management Agency, no casualties or injuries have been reported to the Provincial Emergency Coordination Centre so far. In the southwestern French region of Gironde, 10 months after the huge wildfires, earth is still burning on the shard banks of a lake. This acts uh, as an indication of an invisible fire that is consuming the seams of an old brown coal mine. Croatian Minister of Interior Deva blamed climate change for the recent heavy flooding in several parts of the country. Visiting the town of Obravoc, which was flooded after days of torrential rains, he made the statement, parts of the town were left without electricity and water covered the centre of the city. About a dozen people had to move to upper floors or evacuate their homes to avoid surging water. The rescue teams and hundreds of soldiers were deployed to assess the residents affected by the floods. While a chicken ran loose on the tracks of the Mexico City subway, the chicken eluded several attempts to capture it before one worker tossed his coat over the bird. Although this incident halted the trains for a short while. After the chicken was caught, the metro system began functioning again. A long-neglected architectural jewel near Naples, the Royal Palace of Caserta, also known as the Italian Wasse, will go through a vast restoration, from restoration of its facades to the repairing of the, alley, alley, of the gates and gardens. The palace has landed its third star in Michelin Green Guides. 1,200 rooms, a collection of contemporary art, mixing of the 18th century. The palace is worth a trip. Thank you.